friends, Dr. Beer, we're just getting started on the left shoulder, looking in from the back to the front. Everything you see is magnified 30 or 40 times on the screen. We're looking at the part of the shoulder in the front that we call the rotator interval. You can see the subscapularis tendon going up to the right towards 1 o'clock on the screen. And then crossing that from left to right is the middle of the humeral ligament. What's interesting is we see all this kind of tissue here where we normally see a biceps tendon. And we just don't see any kind of normal um, anatomy yet. So we're going to put the shaver in and see if we can't identify what's going on here. But it's hard to tell if that biceps is just recently ruptured or exactly where it is here, as you see. Normally the biceps should be all the way down to the joint here, we're just seeing this tissue here. Okay, so we've cleared up inside the joint. I'm not really seeing any significant biceps tendon left inside the joint to worry about, so that's a good thing. It's a little bit less surgery you need at this point. Hold the shaver, please. We're going we're gonna to look towards the back of the joint. Here's the posterior capsule. Your joint was not significantly unstable, but I can see some label tearing back here. See that? So we're going to deal with that in a minute. Your rotator cuff up here looks perfect, nice and smooth and light, no signs of any problems here with the rotator cuff. Okay, so we're looking towards the back. Here's this little tear in the labrum that we're going to smooth out. It doesn't need to be reattached, just smoothed out here. Taking out the little part of the labrum that was frayed. I don't think we really need to do anything else back here. So we'll stop. The joint capsule looks great, and there was no instability on the exam, so we're going to stop right there. We're going to get to work up above in just a minute. Um, come back on the shoulder, shoulder. Yeah. So if you look down the front, that anatomy looks great down the front of the shoulder as well. Okay, here we are looking at the bones for up at the top of the string here. It's flat back here. This is where we've been working to make more space. The rotator cuff is what's down below. And you've got a pretty good sized bone for you. can see what's left is hanging down here. This is how we judge how much we're removing. And so I'm going to start over here in the medial corner. Keep working over here. And you can see we're removing about 6 millimeters of the chromium here. Because that's the outer width of this burr. And now we're going to take this spike this thing down and make that go away too. See how that goes away just like that. Okay. And now there's a lot more room for the rotator cuff and I bet that'll take care of most of the problem at this point. down at the rotator cuff. Just want to make sure that there's nothing abnormal here. That's the answer portion of the cuff. You can see there's a little bit of frame where that bone spur was rubbing on it, but now that that spur is gone, that should be fine. Good news as far as 
not having to do anything surgical to the rotator cuff. Okay, so we're going to finish up cleaning away some of the scar tissue and some of the synovial tissue and get you back to the recovery room shortly. Good luck to you now. Bye-bye.